We caved in. The Red Bull Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC event blessed the world with delightful footage of the DLC's landscape, weapons, enemies, and much more. And by much more, I mean this little incident right here. I mean, they have been playing Elden Ring for like 10,000 hours and plus, but uh, I have like one run, so... Yeah. And like 10,000 um, hours in League. I have, I have a lot yeah. of hours in League, and we League players are just a little bit better, right, at games, naturally, uh, right? Yeah, but uh, so it's like players are not real gamers, right? Whoa. So, yeah. Two seconds later. Yeah. Aspect of the Crucible Bloom. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, it's called Bloom, Aspect of the Crucible. Yes. Yeah, that's the flower. Oh wait, no. you have to change. Yeah, no, it's, it's a catalyst. Uh, it's the wrong catalyst. Yeah. Okay, he needs to select the yeah. right catalyst for this type of spell. He's he being a bit of a, a, of a dummy. <laughs> Somebody help him out. Oh my oh, god. No, it's so hard to watch. But this is the man that beat the first boss. <laughs> so, you know. But cringy jokes, awkward reactions, and poetic justice aside, we took a look at the weapons showcased in the event, and we gotta say, we are delighted. <laughs> so today we're going to take a quick look at these new weapon classes and analyze their properties. We will keep it as spoiler-free as possible, but if you don't want to watch anything until the DLC comes out, it's all right. Go play outside or something. The showcasing of weapons is courtesy of PWAR Gaming as he uploaded the raw footage to YouTube. Let's go. The great Katana moveset looks very promising. Starting with the obvious fact that the weapons are longer than the wait for the DLC, the light attacks seem swift and precise, with some piercing attacks added into the mix. The heavy attack covers a huge horizontal angle in front of you, similar to the heavy attack of some great swords, only with 10 times the range. The light jump attack seems great, while the heavy jump attack seems kinda meh for PvP, but totally okay for PvE. The crouch attack looks amazing, and depending on the poise damage this thing deals, it could be very very obnoxious to deal with. Sadly, he only shows the backstep attack and not the running attacks. The stance type Ash of War's light attack seems useful for PvP while the heavy attack is clearly much more PvE oriented. Thing looks like it could chop straight through the fire giant's dong. It has a very low strength requirement for a great weapon and while it's heavy infused, something tells me that the keen infusion would give it a better scaling, but again we'll have to wait. <laughs> Now the backhand blades were the weapons we were most excited for, because if it had a similar moveset to double straight swords but with a better running attack, they could easily become a very strong setup, as they're paired weapons. Paired weapons allow you to wield two iterations of the same weapon merely by two-handing them, leaving your offhand free to use another tool. Unfortunately, although flashy, the moveset of the two-handed attacks is kind of balls. Similar to double katanas, having your character swing one weapon after the other is way less effective than swinging both at the same time, like double straight swords do. The heavy attack does accomplish this, but with much less speed involved. We doubt these things have hyper armor, but if they do, it could be a neat surprise. Sadly, he doesn't show the jump attacks, the running attacks, nor the crouch attack, but the weapon art is quite interesting. The first portion of the attack is a dodge, and you're gonna have to trust me on this one, or else I'll have to show you the boss it was used against. And the second portion is a hit. We don't know if it has a follow-up, as some of these Ashes of War tend to have. The requirements for wielding them are low, and if they work similarly to other double-paired weapons, the strength bonus of two-handing them will not apply, so these are totally dexterity weapons. <laughs> Fume bottle weapons are certainly, well, one of the weapon types of all time. Wow. This particular one seems to be a weapon version of the spark aromatic item. Elijaz does not describe the moveset, but it seems to be all over the place. The one that stood out the most to us was one of the running attacks. To put it simply, it looks cool as f***. And it carries a clear utility too. The damage displayed on the stats screen doesn't seem to correlate with the damage output dealt here. But it could be that each individual blob of perfume deals damage, making it much more effective at close range. Whatever the case is, we're certainly eager to try an experiment. The Light Great Sword is the weapon type a lot of people have been pogging about. The moveset of this thing is bonkers, alongside good range. That's quite big. The light attacks are a mix of piercing and slash damage. The heavy attacks cover a good horizontal range in front of you and are multi-hit, making them amazing for status builds. 
The crouch and backstep attacks are alright, I guess. But here's the thing that piqued our interest the most. The jumping heavy attack is a multi-hit attack, similar to the jumping heavy attack of the Beastman's curved sword. And you know what that means? Maybe. I don't know. Not really. It is possible that the jumping R2 into neutral R1 of light great swords will be a true combo, unless this is a moveset unique to the, uh, milady. The Ash of War is a stance type attack, and both light and heavy attack seem insanely useful. And judging by the stats requirement, these are mainly dex weapons. But depending on poise values and stun duration of the attacks, these could be nasty as strength weapons. We're already calculating the possibilities. For those unwashed furries in the fandom, we've got the bear claws. The moveset seems flashy, but in functionality, kind of sucks. <laughs> The range doesn't seem too great, not counting the fact that it launches you forward with every swing and the Ash of War seems a bit lacklustre. Also, this is a sombre weapon so you can't really infuse it with other Ashes of War. They do inflict bleed though, so that's something I guess. Now, the weapon that left us all pogging the day of the gameplay trailer, the Martial Arts. They are cool as if you're a martial arts fan, this is it. This is the game you'll play for the rest of your life. The weapons can be infused with ashes of war, the requirements are virtually non-existent, and the damage seems solid. Remember the bone fist in Dark Souls 2? It's back and greater than ever. The only thing though is that you basically don't have any range, and depending on poise damage values, they could either be great in PvP or pretty bad. Only time will tell. Smith script weapons come in many shapes and forms it seems, as we can see an axe, a great hammer, and a spear. The gimmick seems to be that they can be thrown by holding the heavy attack, giving them some kind of weird utility, very unique up to now. The numbers seem to be quite interesting and the stat requirements are, well, required. The most interesting ones are the throwing daggers, as they are projectiles that cost absolutely no FP, albeit with limited range. The damage numbers are not bad, although these daggers seem to be heavy infused. Bad idea for a weapon that can't be two-handed. We would have to experiment, of course, but these have the potential of being extremely obnoxious to deal with. <laughs> And finally, the thrusting shields. Apparently they weren't deem of commentary for Elijaz, as he merely chuckled at what seems to be the light attack moveset. <laughs> Although the damage values do appear to be intriguing, if this weapon type can both attack and defend at the same time, it could become a sort of stronger shield poking. So, there you have it, the new eight weapon types in Shadow of the Erd Tree. If you watched all of this, don't worry, little pancake. The temptation was much too high. But hey, only a couple more days left, and you'll be able to experience it all by yourself. But what you can experience now is mystery thingy. We are so hyped for the DLC. Of course, we're going to stream it, and Rani has a little surprise for you regarding that. The mystery thingy of our last video was the Magma Worm Scale Sword. Big congrats to the tiny light bulbs who answered correctly. Here's the new mystery thingy of the day. And soon, mystery thingy will be with DLC weapons. Drink some water and have a nice day, little pencils. <laughs>